Hello and welcome back to my channel. As you can tell by the title of this video, today we are taking a road trip back down memory lane to the first campsite that I stayed at as a solo female traveler. It's just coming to me driving back here. So many emotions are just kind of overwhelming me right now. After a year or so of watching and learning from other Van Life YouTube channels, and converting my minivan into a camper, it was time to test the van life hype. It was this moment, fall of 2020, that changed my life. Did I know what I was doing? Not exactly, but I was determined to do it anyway. I remember being excited, nervous, about the unknown reality of sleeping in my minivan. At the same time, I was looking forward to some alone time and quietness with nature. Was I alone? No. I brought along my guard dog, Chloe. Look at her face. I think she looks just as nervous as I did. <laughs> The campsite we were heading to was two and a half hours away from home, Robert Bluff's Conservation Area. It was a free, primitive campground with decent reviews that I found on the Dirt app. Did my experience go as planned? <laughs> Not at all. Continue watching to hear what happened. at 15701 to 16449 Buffalo Prairie Drive. Is where it all began. <laughs> Robert Bluff's conservation area in Boonesville, Missouri. Oh my goodness gracious. I think someone's in the spot that I camped at, so we can't go to that area. Checking on my car. Wow. Let's take a look. <laughs> I think it's a nice campground. I remember Chloe running all the way up there and then running 
Chloe, get back here. <laughs> the little river they have here is still the same way. Hardly any water in there. Anyways, wow. They had um, a porta potty there when I came. That's not there anymore. They added more camping spots, which was nice. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> this is where it all began. Okay, guys, it was this moment. <laughs> Two years ago, fall of 2020. I don't remember exactly which month it was, but it was definitely fall of 2020. After months and months, I don't even know how many months, almost a year of watching other people on YouTube living this lifestyle and purchasing my minivan and converting her into a camper. Fall of 2020 was the day that I decided I'm going to give van life a try. I wanted to see what the hype was all about. And for me, at that point in my life, I really wanted and what I was looking for was peace and quiet. <laughs> Time with little distractions to spend time with my spirit, read my scriptures, and not have to hear at that time in my life, yelling, screaming, and cussing, okay? I needed a break from that. <laughs> so, yeah, I drove two and a half hours away from where I was living at, at the time, with my husband and came out here. I didn't really know what to expect. Um, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what I would experience. I didn't know how I would feel. I didn't know. But that weekend was my moment of truth is van life for me. <laughs> and of course, Chloe, my guard dog, she had to come because I wasn't gonna go out here alone because she barks. If anybody comes around her mama, she gonna let me know, whether it's an animal or a human, <laughs> she's gonna let me know for sure. So I'm gonna get into the story of what happened. I left St. Louis on a Saturday morning and we arrived here um and we parked we camped over in that area where that car is that's where chloe and i um parked and we got out i had her on a leash and we walked around a little bit at that time there was like no bugs outside, so I felt safe. <laughs> but we walked out, walked around, and was like, okay, this is pretty cool. So I think after that, I let Chloe off the leash so she can just run. <laughs> so she can be free like me, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Then I got nervous. <laughs> Because she ended up way down there. And I'm like, Chloe, get your tail back here, honey. Because she's definitely not used to being outside the backyard. So I was totally afraid that she would 
chase or see a deer or a rabbit or some other animal and chase it and get lost and I would not find her. So I called her back and put her back on her leash to keep her safe with me. Shortly after all of that, um, I believe the conservation ranger, I don't know what the correct title um, of his position is, but he was like a police officer type guy, pulled up to our spot and um, he introduced himself to me and told me that um, I'm here at a good time. The kiddos and teenagers are at school because usually they come down here to drink and God knows what else. <laughs> so I was like, okay. And he reassured me that I should be okay down here. He gave me his contact number in case I had any issues. I told him that me and my dog would be camping here for the weekend, you know, and sure, and I thanked him, you know, and I didn't think nothing of it at the time. I thought, oh, that was a nice, cool dude, <laughs> you know, great. Okay. <laughs> then suddenly, um, I started thinking a little deeper. Um, can I trust a dude? I don't know. I started like second guessing things, but I still was determined to camp here. I don't really have a lot of, I really didn't take a video of much of what I did that day because <laughs> eventually you'll see nothing worked out as planned. I started my first campfire here and I cooked my first van life meal here. And I do have um, one picture of the campfire and I do have a short video of what I cooked. <laughs> okay, so we're chilling, me and my dog, we're chilling. We got us a campfire. We started our campfire and it was, it was a little chilly, but not cold. So I had my Mr. Buddy heater as well. And that was stationed outside the van to blow inside because at that time I didn't know about turning that on in my van. So it kept us pretty warm. So after I ate my food, I made sure Chloe had her something to eat as well and cleaned up my mess. And this is the moment. This is the chill moment. The stillness, the quietness. Get my Bible out, read my scriptures, meditate, you know, just enjoy the outdoors without the bugs. Then all of a sudden, this car pulls up, comes down this road. And like I said, there was porta potties over there or a bathroom station, I don't know pit toilet whatever it was and the car stopped right over there and it backed in so the front was facing my van all tinted windows <laughs> yeah all tinted windows however one person in, in the drive in the passenger seat got out of the, the car and went to the bathroom I did see that but at that point moment um i kind of grabbed my dog and went inside my van and shut the door get away and you may be wondering why well as i stated in my previous video um and i'm just gonna be honest i know missouri's a racist state and i didn't want to show my color to whoever whoever was in that car. Because once the guy got out of the bathroom and went back in the vehicle, I thought they would leave. No, <laughs> they stayed right there. And I'm like, what are they thinking? What are they doing? Are they doing drugs? Are they drinking? Are they gonna be irrational? Are they racist? I don't wanna show that I'm black. And then I started thinking, well, maybe the police officer I don't know, you guys. This is really how I thought that night, that day. I don't know if the police officer was like, hey, we got a single black girl. <laughs> in the woods. 
that's that is what my train of thought was so i called my husband at the time and i told him what was going on and what was happening you know and i was like he's like well are they just sitting there and i'm like yeah <laughs> they're just sitting there and i'm afraid to get out my car so i told my husband i said you know if they don't move i think the best thing for me is to leave this area before it gets dark and i think we had maybe two hours or something or three hours before it was supposed to get dark outside and they sat there and sat there and i waited i probably sat in that van and waited for and put i would say 45 minutes before it got dark but during that time, honey, I didn't read any scriptures. <laughs> no, nothing went as planned. I was not relaxed at that time. I was more worried and concerned about my safety. Um, I didn't want to be bum rushed by a bunch of people or anything that can possibly happen in the middle of the night out here by myself. So while I was in my van, I strategized and came up with plan B <laughs> and plan B was there is a Walmart that was about 17 miles down the road um, back on the highway down the road that allowed overnight parking um, out here at least and I was like that's plan B <laughs> so whoever was in that car I don't I couldn't tell you if it was um, I know it had to been at least two people, the passenger and the driver. I couldn't tell you if there was anyone else in the back seat. Like I said, all of their windows were tinted, including the windshield was tinted. Okay, so I called my husband and I said, they're still here. I think the best thing for me to do is leave. Yes, my first time camping, I did get scared. And I did had to leave because everything inside of me told me to leave. And I think that's when I decided that my channel and my journey is going to be called traveling. At first it was traveling with faith, but now it's traveling in faith. Same thing. And I think that's where that title came from because that day, my, I believe that the most high God is within you, is within me and he's, he, she, the source is within you as well. And I believe that our intuition, our instincts, our gut feelings are there for a reason. I listened to my gut feeling. I listened to my intuition and my instincts that told me get out of this situation it might not be good for you so i did i got everything secured in the van for drive mode and i got on my gps and i directed myself to the walmart which was about 17 miles down the highway so when i arrived at the walmart <laughs> I could breathe. Ah, I felt like I can breathe. I saw other RVs there. Um, I saw uh, truckers there. So I felt a little safer, um, a lot more safer than being out here. But let me tell you, <laughs> as I was leaving out of this campground, that's when that car over there decided to leave as well. So here I am driving down that dirt road that you saw me drive here too. And now I'm thinking, is this car following me? So I'm, you know, so many things are going through my mind. So many, I'm like, oh my gosh, they're gonna cut me off the road. They're gonna get me or I don't, I don't know. So many things were going through my mind and I was so scared at that time. But by the time I got to the main road, they had turned somewhere else. 
So I was like, okay. All right, I just talked to the lovely couple. <laughs> They're headed to Colorado, so of course I had to talk to them and tell them what I experienced in Colorado. Okay, guys, I forgot where I was. I totally forgot where I was. However, I think I was at the point where the car had turned off, turned down a different road and um, so it wasn't following me or it appeared to be following me but at the same day and time I kept an eye on all of my surroundings just to make sure it wasn't <laughs> you guys I think I think so outside the box just to make sure it wasn't like a tag team thing okay you I'm gonna follow her till she get to that point and then you do the rest <laughs> girl that's how I think okay so the traveling in faith that's where that concept came from because without my faith I probably never would have listened to my internal feelings I don't know but that's my story and I'm sticking to it <laughs> We were at the Walmart, right? We we're at the Walmart where I felt safe, okay? Because I saw, I saw other RVs, truckers, and things like that there, so I felt safe. So, you know, me and Chloe, we had already ate. We were good. I had some snacks, chips, and all that stuff in the van and everything, and we were good. I was able to take my dog outside to use the bathroom several times. It was all good until later on that night <laughs> it started storming oh i did not check the weather but beforehand so i wasn't expecting a storm and this storm was tough and if anybody knows anything about missouri you know we get plenty of tornadoes so that wind came and my car was rocking. I was like, you know what? <laughs> Am I going to get caught up in a tornado out here? You know, this is my first night camping in my van. I mean, what else could go wrong? But I figured if it got too bad or anything, I can always run into Walmart for cover. So we stayed out there. <laughs> and weathered the storm and slept in the van all night. And the next morning I was still alive <laughs> and I was very proud of myself. And the one thing that I was most proud of was not giving up. The moral of this story is never second guess yourself. Always listen to that gut feeling that, tell, that tells you if if you should stay in a situation or leave that's the most high within you warning you or you can call it your guardian angels whatever you want to call it if it's coming from the bottom of your stomach and in your heart and in your head honey maybe you should listen and i'm glad i did but at the same day and time, I did not give up. I kept going. <laughs> and that's when I fell in love with van life. I really enjoyed the peace and quiet, the oneness, the stillness. I enjoyed the challenge that it gave me. I learned how to do a campfire that night. And I also learned um, that you should really, I should have brushed the dry leaves away from the fire pit but you learn you're gonna learn as you go on this journey in van life be patient with yourself i know i had to learn to be patient with myself during this journey it's been two years now i started part-time now i'm full-time um now my confidence level is definitely a lot stronger than my first experience, my first merry-go-round. But at the end of the day, I always listen to my instincts. I always listen to my intuition. Because this was not the only time that I had to leave a campground. There has been more. That's why 
I never arrive at a campground at night. I always arrive in the daytime early enough so I can get a feel of the area that I'm gonna be camping at. I'm glad that I never gave up because I spiritually, personally have grown so much internally over the last two years. And if you have a passion, a goal that you wanna reach or something that you want to do that gives you internal peace, as long as it's not hurting you or hurting anyone else, don't give up on yourself. Don't do it. Give it all you got. And any roadblocks or obstacles that you may have to accomplish that is there to make you stronger, is there to make you wiser. So I thank you all for taking the time to watch my video. If you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that you're notified when I post my next video. Shalom and blessings to all. Thank you.